Good evening and welcome. And, uh, you're joining us now live from Ahmedabad. Just a couple of hours, less than a day from uh, when the uh, US president joins us in India for this big event. It's being called Howdy Trump. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be an occasion when there is so much for so many people to keep an eye out on. Well, just uh, over here, as you can see behind me, you've got the Sabarmati Riverfront beautifully lit up. Uh, you've got a lot of people over here very interested in the visit. The entire road the, from the airport to this area and to the Motera Stadium, where the two leaders will be heading tomorrow, is uh, it's absolutely been scrubbed clean. Uh, there are mini stadiums uh, over there as well. Uh, and so a lot of excitement. And we're going to be talking about all of that in the next one hour or so. But first, a quick look at this uh, images, which have been tweeted out in the last little while by the US president as he was departing the White House. Well, I look forward to being with the people of India. We're going to have many millions and millions of people. It's a long trip. But I get along very well with the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi. He's a friend of mine. But the Prime Minister told me this will be the biggest event they've ever had. So it's going to be very exciting. I'm going to be there one night. That's not too much. India all set to host the US President Donald Trump with on his maiden visit to the country. Trump will visit Ahmedabad, Agra and New Delhi in his 36-hour long visit accompanied by his entire family. At 11.40 a.m., the U.S. President's plane, Air Force One, will touch down in Ahmedabad's Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport. At 12.15 hours, President Trump will visit Sabarmati Ashram. An hour later, the highlight of his Ahmedabad visit, the over 100 crore Namaste Trump event at Ahmedabad's newly renovated Motera Stadium, touted as the world's largest cricket stadium. Union Home Minister Amit Shah arrived in Ahmedabad on Sunday to oversee preparations and review security arrangements. At 15.30 hours on Monday, the Trumps will set off for Agra, where they will visit the iconic Taj Mahal. The Yogi Adityanath government in Uttar Pradesh has mounted a massive image makeover of the city, which people say is unprecedented. More than 900 cusacks of water have been released into the Yamuna by the State Irrigation Department. The Archaeological Survey of India is cleaning up the Taj Mahal in a big way, using the mud pack therapy to remove dark spots. As a symbolic gesture to pay respect to the United States President Donald Trump, the Agra mayor will hand over a key of the city made of silver to welcome the state guest. <laughs> ताला खोलिए और आगरा प्रवेश कीजिए इसलिए चाबी देने का कांसेप्ट हम लोगों का रहता है यह चाबी दिल्ली से बनकर आ रही है और 600 ग्राम सिल्वर की यह चाबी है और उस चाबी में ताजमहल की आकृति प्रिंट की हुई है इसमें मुझे लगता है कि उनको यह चाबी भी पसंद आई हमारी बनाई after a whistle stop Agra visit, the Trumps will arrive in Delhi at 19.30 hours for the business end of the trip, including a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Modi on Tuesday and a ceremonial dinner at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. But already there is politics over this, with Congress leader in the Lok Sabha, Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary, questioning the decision of the government to not extend an invitation to Congress's interim chief, Sonia Gandhi, for the Rashtrapati Bhavan dinner for the US President on Tuesday. Ram Sahib is here, our Rashtrapati Ji, Mahamani Rashtrapati Ji, will give them a dinner. But why is Vipaks not a problem? क्यों हमारा नेत्री मैडम सोनिया जी को नहीं बुलाया जा रहा है क्यों जब मोदी साहब अमेरिका जाते हैं हावड़ी में जब प्रोग्राम करते हैं हावड़ी मोदी जो किए थे उस मंच पर डेमोक्रेट भी थे रिपब्लिकन भी थे अब हमारे ही हैं से मोदी जी रहेंगे और कोई नहीं रहेंगे so it's Namaste Trump, Howdy Modi once again and it's all happening over here in Ahmedabad. Tomorrow is going to be the big day. Shortly before 12 in the afternoon, the US President will be here and Ahmedabad is ready 
There's going to be an incredible celebration at the Motera Stadium. We'll be there bringing you the very latest. But the big question, what will India and the US get done in substantial terms in this visit? With camera person Manu Nair, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. All right, well, you've uh, got an idea over there of what's expected. Uh, the big question, will this be a visit more about optics or will this be a visit uh, about some substantive business dealings, defense dealings uh, and political dealings between India and the United States? Well, if any of that is to take place, that would take part take place in the second half of the visit uh, from Tuesday onwards. I think tomorrow is a day all about optics. It's all about color. It's all about this incredible sense of excitement in Ahmedabad, where I am right now. As you can see behind me, uh, the Sabarmati Riverfront, it's beautifully lit up. Uh, and uh, there is a, a real sense of expectation over here. And a little distance away from here, you can actually see uh, the Motera Stadium as well lit up. And that's going to be the venue of uh, the Howdy Trump uh, event tomorrow morning. That's going to be uh, after 12 in the afternoon. Now, just in terms of um, the timing of it all, the U.S. president arrives over here at about 11.40 tomorrow morning. There's going to be a motorcade and he's going to be going to the Savarmati Ashram first. And then at the end of that, uh, a short visit over there, he's going to be traveling to the Motera Stadium where with Prime Minister Modi, he'll be addressing so many people who are gathered over here. Now, leading up to this visit, the U.S. president had even gone to the extent of saying that as many as or up to 10 million people could be lining the streets of Ahmedabad ready to greet him. Now, I'm not entirely certain about that number because that's well more than the population of the city. But I think it's fair to say that the numbers will be very large. When I left the airport uh, earlier today and I came down to the center of Ahmedabad, I noticed that there were busy, busy preparations underway. Every uh, 100 or 200 meters or so, there are many stages which have been set up uh, where there would be dance performances or other performances as the U.S. president's motorcade goes down. The big question, will he actually stop in some places uh, and actually greet some of the people over there who will be there? There, there, there are fences which have been set up uh, to greet him. And of course, gigantic cutouts uh, all over the city. All the billboards virtually that I have seen, every single one, without exception, uh, almost, uh, would have uh, Prime Minister Modi and Donald Trump. So that is the sense of excitement that exists uh, over here. Let me introduce a very distinguished panel uh, that we have uh, over here uh, with us. Uh, I'm joined by Hari Desai, the political analyst and columnist. Thanks very much for being with us. Digan Sompura, the international political analyst. Uh, and uh, Dr. Bakul Dholakia, the former director of IIM Ahmedabad. And over here on this side, uh, we've actually got a lot of India's Gen Next, some of our brightest minds, um, all management gurus, I'm sure, in, in their own time and in their own right, all IIMA students who are very excited uh, to be here with us, and it's wonderful for us to have them. Also joining us, uh, Ambassador Rajiv Dogra. Uh, he joins us uh, from Delhi, and Anand Ahuja, uh, a Trump supporter and attorney uh, at law, he joins us uh, from the United States. Uh, let me come across uh, to you first, uh, Dr. Dhulakia. Is there a very big sense of, uh, of anticipation over here? When you talk to people in the city, your friends, uh, is, this, is this really an event that they're looking forward to? Yes, there is absolutely no doubt about that. But what is important and striking is the genuineness of the excitement. It is not a make-believe thing. People are genuinely excited. People are expecting a lot out of this visit. And the expectation is that the President of the United States uh, would also feel excited about visiting Ahmedabad. Visiting India, okay, but visiting Ahmedabad. So, uh, you know, it's the, the slogan has been changed uh, to Namaste India, to give it a more India, pan-India appeal. Uh, that said, um, um, you know, Ahmedabad in quite this state of preparedness. Uh, Xi Jinping was here a few years back. There was a lot of excitement over there. Uh, how would you compare that visit and this visit ahead of the visit actually taking place? Uh, well, I hope uh, it does not repeat. Really? Because uh, when uh, uh, Xi Jinping was here, uh, immediately after that, you know, Doklam was, uh, 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 we had to face that. So, uh, but uh, no prospect of war with America, fortunately. <laughs> we, we are not going to. 
um, I mean, of course, uh, uh, both the countries, uh, you know, uh, when we are coming closer to and uh, uh, we establish strong relationship. I mean, uh, we are proud of our uh, leader here and uh, he comes to Ahmedabad. Uh, I mean, uh, Gujarat is also proud of uh, their visit. Uh, about the outcome of the visit, I am not sure. Right. Uh, reason behind the visit, no. I mean, uh, as you um, rightly said uh, uh, in the introduction, uh, it may have some political repercussion and no diplomatic or business relations. Sure. And would you agree that, uh, that this visit is perhaps more about optics than anything substantive because there's not going to be a trade deal? Uh, at least uh, if it happens, it'll be you know, very unexpected. There is a defense deal, but that's been in the cards for a long time. Um, and yet there's this incredible Howdy Trump, Howdy Modi event, both of them sort of howdying each other over here in Ahmedabad. Uh, is is that what this visit is all about? Atmospherics and optics. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that that's not an important part of diplomacy. I'm not. But I'm just trying to understand how you gauge this visit. Well, uh, this is very great event for Ahmedabad because the uh, uh, largest uh, democracy country, uh, America, president is visiting Ahmedabad. And the thing is, uh, first of all, it is not official visit from the government uh, from uh, America. So it is her, is a very personal visit, and he is coming to Ahmedabad just for felicitation. And after that, he is going to Delhi and Agra and etc. So 36 hour journey uh, stay in uh, in India. So that is more over personal than political. You said about uh, the optics. I think that uh, whenever two nations uh, presidents or president le uh, presidential level people when they are meeting. So I think they have first agenda is business first. So anyhow, good business deal should be come up after this meeting. That's, that is my hope. All right. Well, we're also joined by Mr. YK Alag, who couldn't be over here with us in this location, but he does join us uh, from the city. Uh, good evening, Mr. Alag. Thanks very much for being with us. What are your expectations of this visit? I think one of the more important things in this visit is the pacts on homeland security. Uh, for some reason, people are avoiding that issue. That is a very serious issue. And uh, I think uh, the anti-terrorism um, underlining the whole thing uh, is again something very important. Now, you don't really expect the trade deal. Yet, on the other hand, the facilitation, facilitation of business deals and particularly the defense deals, because please remember that defense deals have a lot of second order and third order implications uh, for the economy. Defense cooperation means we may have access to uh, certain technologies. It may mean that our people can then develop those technologies. So I think uh, it's not just optics. That is a mistake. Of course, the optics is there. Uh, between India and the United States, presidential visits have been at the level of sort of people to people uh, understanding. As you know, Indians and Americans get along very well with each other at a personal level. As far as the countries are concerned, we have problems. We are a big country. They are a big country. And uh, as far as trade deals and so on are concerned, there are serious issues. And this visit is not going to deal with those issues because they will be unfolding in the next half year. Sure. Uh, in fact, uh, if we can pull up that graphics on the defense deal, uh, which is expected, it is about uh, $2.4 billion plus. Uh, it's a deal for uh, 24 um, uh, helicopters, which the Indian Navy has wanted for a very long time. And to give you uh, some detail on this, the, the helicopter in question is the MH-60. It's uh, an anti-submarine helicopter that the Indian Navy wants for its frontline warships. And the, the importance of this is the following. We deploy state-of-the-art platforms and warships and have been doing so for quite some time, but we haven't been able to deploy anti-submarine helicopters on board of a modern standard. In fact, the helicopters presently being deployed in the limited numbers that they are available first entered service with the Indian Navy way back in 1971. 
but those variants of the seeking helicopter that i'm talking about may not have been in, may not still be in service but it's the same type of helicopter inducted in the 80s which remains in service all these decades later and the indian navy for a long time has said that has to end so that in terms of of a takeaway uh, a multi billion dollar defense deal is almost certainly likely uh, to come through but we're also joined by some wonderful young students from uh, uh, IIMA over here let me come across to you first what are your own expectations of this visit or or are you uh, as i am looking forward to the the great modi trump show tomorrow i am definitely looking forward to the great show tomorrow and i uh, personally believe that modi and trump are trying to actually change the, change the face of diplomacy where at one point of time the round table conferences were the norm of the day at this point of time um, spending exorbitantly and having such grand shows i think that's the way diplomacy will actually happen in the future right and would any of you like to come in on you know the the bonhomie that exists between trump uh, and modi in the past we've seen them in this huge howdy modi event as well uh, it, i mean there are differences between india and the united states but somehow when the two come together that doesn't come to the fore uh, at least not in these big events would anybody have any views on that Even I think it's a kind of a reciprocation of the event that uh, Mr. Modi had in the U.S. and even uh, Mr. Trump right now recently in the, his rallies has been talking about how India has shortchanged them in a way, but it's because of his liking of Prime Minister Modi that he's coming over here. So I mean, there is definitely a reflection of their personal camaraderie in the U in the Indo-U.S. relations now. Yeah. and would you agree that you know there is this personal chemistry between the two leaders uh, which really makes this relationship special because a lot of people would say that that doesn't really matter let's look at the hard geopolitics which isn't always favorable to india i would definitely say um, there is a special uh, kind of relationship between yeah. these two leaders um i don't know how much that will materialize uh, on the business front um, i mean uh, looking at it from uh, the trade deals uh, trump has uh, said that okay india is uh, hurting us on the trade front but i like modi so i guess uh, it will materialize on the business front as well all right I, it will materialize uh, on the business front uh, as well let me go across to uh, ambassador dogra uh, at this stage uh, good evening ambassador what for you uh is um, the likely highlight of this visit well that's a very tough question to answer when there's been so much of debate speculation and commentary already uh but every indo american visit or meeting or encounter as you might wish to call it has a sense of drama about it in some cases an air of anticipation also but in this case there is also a very strong feeling of festival about the visit and the interesting thing is trump himself is a very active participant in this festival uh, because right from the beginning from for about now uh, almost a week he has been tweeting about it and he has been speaking about it in his rallies but there is a but also uh while amdabad is the festival part of it agra is a tribute to love but delhi is where the diplomacy takes over and real hard talk takes over that doesn't mean that in amdabad while they are traveling together or seated together they would not talk of some important issues but delhi is the central the nerve center for really the business uh, official part of it and the official part of it is going to be uh, very meaningful both for america and india because for america the most important two factors if i may call them are one china the second pull out from afghanistan and for india what happens after the pull out from afghanistan is really equally crucial is really equally crucial all right Let me go across to uh, Mr. Anand Ahuja, who's a, a well-known Trump supporter and uh, an attorney at law. He's joining us from the United States. Uh, good evening, Mr. Ahuja. Thanks very much uh, for being with us uh, on this program. We're all looking forward to this visit to see what it, uh, what it's all about. 
but there are many in this country who'd be a bit concerned about the United States and their willingness uh, to tell India about religious freedoms. Uh, there are those who believe that perhaps that lesson or that message needs to be sent out as well. So how important a part of this visit do you believe that part will be? The U.S. president telling us about religious freedoms in India, something the U.S. administration has said that he will do. Uh, first of all, good morning, uh, Vishnu. It's a New York time. It's a morning here. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a saying uh, that uh, whether glass is full or glass is half empty, uh, it's a matter of individual's perception. I see, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, positive things uh, being said about Trump's visit to India, as well as a lot of negative things being circulated in media media about Trump's uh, this visit to India. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, question of uh, rights of uh, or re religious freedom is concerned, uh, I think uh, Trump's relationship with Modi is actually going to help Modi government with respect to uh, what some uh, U.S. senators and some uh, politicians all over the world have actually criticized Modi government with respect to whether it's a CAA or with respect to uh, articles, the removal of Article 370 in Kashmir is concerned. Uh, as I said, that considering uh, Trump's uh, own views on uh, various uh, minority communities in United States and uh, his alleging terrorism to certain communities in United States or all over the world, uh, it's actually going to help Modi, uh, what, the, what the position Modi has taken with respect to CAA or with respect to Article 370 uh, in Kashmir is concerned. So, uh, to actually reflect on this, this is actually an important point uh, that, um, you know, uh, on the one hand, India says that, look, whatever we've done in Kashmir as far as 370 is concerned is our business. It's an internal matter. On the other hand, there is also a perception that India wants the international community to look upon us favorably. At a time when there has been a great deal of criticism of India internationally, the fact that Donald Trump is coming here, would this be seen as some sort of a symbol of victory by the government? Uh, first of all, there is this perception that there is a great deal of international criticism. And this is a perception that is a matter of make-belief. Really? Because, yes, because there is enough evidence to suggest if there was real international criticism, then some international forum would have raised a voice. It's already been raised by several European parliamentarians. No, it has been raised by those European parliamentarians who are known to be biased. But and, what about and, the government exactly. of Canada? Yeah. What about those in the United States? What about uh, the British government? Apart from the Russian government, just about everybody internationally has had very strong views on this. No. I think that every delegation which has visited uh, Kashmir has very, very clearly spoken in favor. And those were not stage managed. Like the anti-Kashmir demonstrations which are stage managed, these are not stage managed. I think the time has come for people to know the truth, right. people to know the various forces which are behind these agitations and which are more stage managed than the pro-India views that international community. Why are we not looking at the positives? Article 370 removal has been accepted by international community as India's internal matter. Many people are also accepting CAA as India's international matter. And therefore, these are internal matters to India, and that is a, that is something which okay. we expect the Donald Trump to clearly assert. Okay, Dr. Alag disagrees. Dr. Alag, go ahead with that. Uh, apparently, this is all something that the international community has accepted, uh, whether it's Kashmir or CA, NRC. Your views on this, sir? No, I think uh, we have to be very sensitive to the fact that uh, between India and the United States, there has always been, there are two large democracies, and we do comment on questions of human rights, on uh, questions of exploitation, on the basis of, uh, uh, in their case, color or sex, 
and in our case, caste and religion and so on. Um, I think we have to be sensitive to these things to dismiss the entire international opinion, what the Secretary General of the United Nations is saying, uh, what various national leaders, the Canadians and the French you have already talked about, um, and to say that this has no implications for India's foreign policy, and in fact, India's economic relations is, uh, in my mind, uh, not being realistic at all. Uh, so there are uh, serious issues of a political nature. Now, you see, these kinds of events, when, two, uh, when a president meets a prime minister, you don't discuss these kinds of things. But I think the fact that President Trump went out of the way a number of times to say this, and remember, President Trump is a person who's had a lot of business interest in India. I mean, when I walk in, in uh, Manhattan, one sees the Trump Tower, but there are Trump Towers in in Bombay, in uh, in Bangalore. So he knows India. He's not somebody who is uh, uh, away from India. That in a little while from now. In fact, I just wanted to get a few more views on America and where it stands vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, religious freedoms in this country or, uh, let's say, the Kashmir issue itself. Now, the U.S. panel on religions has said, and I quote, serious concerns that CAA serves as a protective measure for non-Muslims in case of exclusion from nationwide NRC. Muslims would primarily bear punitive consequences of exclusion from NRC. Hindutva political rhetoric questions the legitimacy of Muslims and that the CA is a significant downward turn in religious freedom in India. Now, one can agree or disagree with it, but I think the, the question I was asking is that this is a U.S. panel on, on religions and one among several bodies. So do we, when we look at Trump coming over here, forget all about these statements which have been made? Uh, well, uh, Vishnu, when he comes here, I think uh, uh, he should understand one thing that, you know, these are our internal matters. That is one. Of course, we can't uh, keep our eyes closed. I beg to differ with Dr. Dholakia on that. Uh, there are hard realities. Certain uh, uh, facts are on. And uh, whether they are stage managed or not, you know, that, that we will have to introspect. On, uh, I mean, but that is internal matter. That is what I would uh, sure. stay. Uh, uh, Trump also is making contradictory statements all the uh, all along. Yes. I mean, he keeps on talking uh, about it, uh, mediating with uh, uh, Kashmir affairs. I think quite repeatedly he has uh, said, though we have made it our uh, our stand clear that we don't yeah. want any other country to mediate. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, these are the issues. But I think uh, particularly this uh, uh, visit. I don't think that uh, it would uh, uh, benefit uh, Modi. Mo I think it is the visit is uh, to benefit Trump the most. Why? Third November uh, is a D day, and I think. But the U.S. Was... population, the, the the Indian population in the United States is still relatively small to influence an election. So I'm not sure. Would you agree with him when he says that this favors Trump more? This visit. Yes. Uh, oh, you agree? Yes, Vishnu. Okay. No, no. I, I, let me let me clear it first. Uh, you said in a uh, community in, uh, in, uh, in America, Indian community. So Indian Americans in America is about uh, 4 million as per last uh, census. And about 40% uh, are Gujarati. So uh, just a few months back when it was surveyed in America about the re Republican candidate, I mean uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, popularity. So in that survey, 14% uh, people of Indian American they were supporting uh, Donald Trump. Later on, after Howdy Modi program ap event happened, that was increased up to 56%. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is the yes, beneficial that, to that him. I think a, that's, that's an important point. We have a lot more to discuss on this program. We need to take uh, a short break uh, at this stage and we'll come back with uh, a lot more, discuss trade, uh, the non-existence of trade really on this visit but also more about the atmospherics uh, and the sense of excitement and also some of the key issues uh, which India and the U.S. face uh, as this relationship progresses. It's time now for this short break.
welcome back. Uh, we are broadcasting live from the banks uh, of uh, the Sabarmati over here in Ahmedabad. Uh, less than a day now to go for uh, what should be a fantastic visit, certainly highly anticipated. Uh, whether this is all about optics or it's about serious business, we'll know later. But let's not take away for a moment from what uh, tomorrow Monday will mean for so many people over here in Ahmedabad. There's going to be this great Howdy Trump moment or Namaste Trump moment, I should say, a follow up of Howdy Modi in the United States. Uh, the Namaste Trump event is going to be at the Motera Stadium, a short distance away from where I am. Ahmedabad has been scrubbed clean. Um, uh, there are uh, there are this entire route uh, is full of posters and cutouts of the U.S. president and Prime Minister Modi as well. And there's so much more. But what really will take place tomorrow uh, when Trump addresses people in India and around the world? And indeed, uh, what will the chemistry between Modi and Trump be? We'll wait for tomorrow to find out more about that. But the U.S. president seems to be fairly excited about this visit. He's uh, tweeted images of his helicopter leaving the White House on the first leg of his journey to India. And he's also had this to say to the media. Well, I look forward to being with the people of India. We're going to have many millions and millions of people. It's a long trip, but I get along very well with the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi. He's a friend of mine, but the Prime Minister told me this will be the biggest event they've ever had. So it's going to be very exciting. I'm going to be there one night. That's not too much. India all set to host the US President Donald Trump with on his maiden visit to the country. Trump will visit Ahmedabad, Agra and New Delhi in his 36-hour long visit accompanied by his entire family. At 11.40 a.m., the US President's plane, Air Force One, will touch down in Ahmedabad's Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport. At 12.15 hours, President Trump will visit Sabarmati Ashram. An hour later, the highlight of his Ahmedabad visit, the over 100 crore Namaste Trump event at Ahmedabad's newly renovated Motera Stadium, touted as the world's largest cricket stadium. Union Home Minister Amit Shah arrived in Ahmedabad on Sunday to oversee preparations and review security arrangements. At 15.30 hours on Monday, the Trumps will set off for Agra, where they will visit the iconic Taj Mahal. The Yogi Adityanath government in Uttar Pradesh has mounted a massive image makeover of the city, which people say is unprecedented. More than 900 cusacks of water have been released into the Yamuna by the State Irrigation Department. The Archaeological Survey of India is cleaning up the Taj Mahal in a big way, using the mud pack therapy to remove dark spots. As a symbolic gesture to pay respect to the United States President Donald Trump, the Agra mayor will hand over a key of the city made of silver to welcome the state guest. दिल्ली से बनकर आ रही है और 600 ग्राम सिल्वर की ये चाबी है और उस चाबी में ताजमहल की आकृति प्रिंट की हुई है इसमें मुझे लगता है कि उनको ये चाबी भी पसंद आई हमारी बनाई After a whistle stop Agra visit the Trumps will arrive in Delhi at 19:30 hours for the business end of the trip including a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Modi on Tuesday and a ceremonial dinner at the Rashtrapati Bhavan but already there is politics over this, with Congress leader in the Lok Sabha, Adhi Ranjan Chaudhary, questioning the decision of the government to not extend an invitation to Congress's interim chief, Sonia Gandhi, for the Rashtrapati Bhavan dinner for the US President on Tuesday. Ram Sahib is here, our Rashtrapati Ji, Mahamani Rashtrapati Ji, will give them a dinner. But why do you have a lot of people? क्यों हमारा नेत्री मैडम सोनिया जी को नहीं बुलाया जा रहा है क्यों जब मोदी साहब अमेरिका जाते हैं हावड़ी में जब प्रोग्राम करते हैं हावड़ी मोदी जो किए थे उस मंच पर डेमोक्रेट भी थे रिपब्लिकन भी थे अब हमारे ही हैं सिर्फ मोदी जी रहेंगे और कोई नहीं रहेंगे so it's Namaste Trump, Howdy Modi once again. 
and it's all happening over here in Ahmedabad. Tomorrow is going to be the big day. Shortly before 12 in the afternoon, the US president will be here and Ahmedabad is ready. There's going to be an incredible celebration at the Motera Stadium. We'll be there bringing you the very latest. But the big question, what will India and the US get done in substantial terms in this visit? With camera person Manu Nair, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. Well, uh, let me just go back to Ambassador Rajiv uh, Dogra at this stage. Another uh, somewhat controversial part of this visit, Ambassador Dogra, is the absence of, say, the Delhi Chief Minister or uh, even the, uh, the Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia in those schools where they've done so much work. Now, that's something uh, where, where Melania Trump is actually going to be going uh, to visit the schools uh, to see how it's working, some of the new programs over there. Is this something which is peculiar? Why shouldn't the Chief Minister of a state be part of uh, a visit to a school where his government seems to have done a lot of work? Well, the details are still not clear as to why it has happened. Uh, but the speculation is that it was at the instance of the American embassy. Now, that seems certainly strange because, after all, the chief ministers of UP and Gujarat are going to be uh, participating in some way or the other in uh, Trump programs uh, in Ahmedabad and in Agra. Uh, so, if US embassy has objected to uh, the chief minister of Delhi or the deputy chief minister being there in the school with which they were very much associated, uh, it does seem a little odd. And uh, I think especially after an election where people of Delhi have voted overwhelmingly precisely for these successes uh, done by uh, the, the two of them. So uh, let's hope even at this late moment there is a rethink in case as is being speculated, as I said, U.S. Embassy is the one which is objecting. So uh, there's a clarification which has actually come in from the U.S. Embassy as well. And I'm going to read that out. They say while the U.S. Embassy had no objection to the presence of the chief minister and the deputy chief minister, we appreciate their recognition that this is not a political event and that it is best to ensure the focus is on education, the school and the students. And that's an, a statement attributed to the U.S. Embassy spokesperson in New Delhi. Do you find that statement somewhat peculiar? Uh, <laughs> ultimately, you know, it's, it's, it's the working of a government which has made the schools better in Delhi for one way or the other. And so it's not a political sort of gain or anything like that. It's just children in a school and, and the government being a part of it. But the U.S. government says no. No one except the first lady should be there. Well, uh, Delhi Municipal Schools, the very important thing what I am looking at, the most dynamic results they have shown this time. I government mean, schools. Government schools, uh, yes. Corporation is Cor different. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. So, corporation, I mean, government school, they have, uh, the result has come out with a 96% that was historical. Yeah. So, that is very tremendous, uh, important thing for uh, us also. And when uh, First Lady is visiting, uh, First Lady of America, if she is visiting, so she should be definitely she should visit and she should appreciate the schools also all right um, and let me bring that across to some uh, some of you uh, do you think that uh, political leaders should be kept out uh, of parts of this visit uh, whether it is uh, the up chief minister when uh, president trump goes to agra or the delhi chief minister when the first lady goes to a school or do you believe that political leaders should be a part of that part of the visit would anybody like to to take that yeah I got it. Yeah, so uh, definitely the administration, the Delhi administration should be uh, consulted because the measures that they have put in are for uh, issues like education and the performance of students is something that US themselves are struggling with. They, when it comes to the, uh, you know, better uh, developed countries, they are quite low in the pecking order. So they could understand from the Delhi government how they have improved it so drastically. So they should, the administration should definitely be a part of this. All right. Would uh, the administration should be a part of it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or if in case they decide not to be a part of it, it should be uniform. Like you can't be having some chief ministers being allowed on some parts of the visit and then excluding some select on selectively. Right. So if uh, the decision or if the execution has been on the by the political leaders themselves, they've overseen it, they've overseen the implementation of those education reforms, definitely it makes sense to be there, uh, to have them at that uh, venue. All right. 
I yeah, yeah, I, I, I will like to differ from that. Sure, uh, because it is it is not a political event. It is a first lady who is uh, so who is uh, visiting. So le let it be like if embassy or U.S. government doesn't want to participate uh, political leaders, then it's okay. It is their wish. Then we should uh, we should accept it, whatever it is. They are getting the mileage. They are getting that it is this is the Delhi uh, government school. That's it. What uh, I think so, Delhi government or uh, the Kesri uh, or so Chief Minister or uh, Mr. Uh, Sisodia will visit. That is not going to get anything. They are not a diplomats. Okay. Uh, let me go back to uh, to Mr. Alag, who's uh, back with us uh, at the stage. Mr. Alag, uh, for you, what would uh, you like to see happen at the end of this visit for you to deem it a success? Well, basically, we have to appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Trump is a good businessman and he knows India. Uh, you know, I'm so happy. You know, he's a product of uh, the Wharton School and I'm very happy that when he was doing his MBA there, I was also doing my doctorate there and teaching. Uh, and he possibly has even uh, been in some of my lectures. But uh, the thing to is that we should be looking at the business angle. Now, uh, a lot of things are done off the record. Uh, as uh, the ambassador was saying, we don't have the details. But let's look at Gujarat. Now, Amul, for example, is trying its level best to have a foothold in America. But some of these are extremely controversial issues. Uh, you know, they involve uh, uh, domestic protection, both in their case as well as in our case. We do know that trade benefits. I think uh, the president's training shows him that. The extent to which we will be able to uh, contain narrow national interests and take a longer term view and uh, enter into the kind of trade deals which benefit both the United States and India is still in my mind an open issue. But I do hope that there will be some progress on this in the discussions that will take place on Wednesday. And the personal chemistry between the president sure. and the prime minister will benefit uh, both the countries. That should, that's always a win-win, the personal chemistry between the two. But I think the relationship between India and the United States, it's remarkable. 20 years back, uh, we weren't friends. I mean, we were friends on paper, but in terms of a profound political diplomatic equation, it just wasn't there. Uh, today, when we disagree, we disagree as friends. Uh, and we disagree on a lot of issues. For example, trade, we disagree with each other on it. It's not been resolved. And yet the bedrock of the relationship is a strategic partnership. Uh, and so does that really give uh, a certain depth to this relationship that it's not about this visit or the success or failure of this visit. It's not about the chemistry that the bedrock is still solid. I mean, I think that's what the relationship is. Would you agree? Yeah, I think we must understand that this is the seventh time the two leaders are meeting. Secondly, it is not just the chemistry, but all their statements, their body language, everything that they say and do also indicates that both of them have mutual respect for each other. And in any long-term strategic relationship, that is what matters the most. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised Trump talking about make in India right. in the context of uh, trade deals, which means that Trump has told you that I understand your concerns. We also understand their concerns. When the two leaders have mutual respect for each other, when they understand the concerns of each other, when they understand the issues of each other, then the possibility of a trade deal happening increase substantially. Secondly, mm -hmm. India's concern about ac action against terrorism and anti-terrorist strategy, that is where there is total agreement between the two leaders. Yeah. And which is a very, very positive thing for us. At a political level, I think joint action by India and America against terror outfits is the most significant outcome of these meetings and I'm sure that on that there would be concrete action that is going to happen. 
Actually, there are differences there also, and it's important that you uh, mention that because I wanted to take that uh, back to Mr. Ahuja. Mr. Ahuja, on the one hand, India and the United States have been fighting against terrorism now for so many years. And yet, while Trump and Modi will likely be speaking about terrorism and homeland security and all of that, in just a, a few weeks, perhaps, the United States is going to be getting into an agreement with the Taliban. Talks are essentially over. Uh, and that doesn't work for India because we do not want anybody to be talking to the Taliban. They remain an out-and-out -out terror group for us. Uh, so would you say that there remain important differences between India and America, even on the issue of dealing with terrorism? Uh, Vishnu, as far as India is concerned, uh, India's main concern with respect to terrorism is terrorism coming from Pakistan and not from terrorism coming from Afghanistan. Uh, in fact, if you see that uh, if there is any understanding between these two leaders on the issue of terrorism, India is going to get a lot of advantage out of that because if if United States is against terrorism coming from a particular community, it's, uh, India also has the same concern. So basically, uh, Trump's having a deal with Afghan uh, uh, Taliban in Afghanistan is actually going to help India in the long run because after United States uh, concentration is taken away from terrorism coming from Afghanistan, then the focus will be now both United States as well as of India with respect to terrorism coming out of Pakistan. So I personally believe that it's going to be a big help uh, to India with respect to terrorism in the long run. All right. Well, uh, I'm just going to quickly read out uh, a tweet uh, or a message from the U.S. president shortly before he departed. He says, I look forward to being with the people of India. We will be with millions and millions of people. I get along very well with the prime minister. He's a friend of mine. The prime minister told me this will be the biggest event they have ever had. Is this going to be the biggest event ever for a foreign leader, it probably will be. Uh, it probably will be, I think, in terms of numbers. But I also think that the numbers have been hyped by the US president beyond words. I mean, last I checked, the population of Ahmedabad was what, in the range of what, 8 million or something? Last time around, uh, in his last message, tweet said up to 10 million people are going to be over here. So he's got a lot he's expecting, isn't that, isn't that the case? He quote, that's right, he quoted our Prime Minister, who knows more about Ahmedabad than perhaps any other city, and, and then 10 million. Yeah, so that, was that, that was quoted by Narendra yeah. Modi, he quoted. So let's hope Trump isn't disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is a bit of a worry. These numbers are, are truly crazy, aren't they? Yeah, so uh, sure. In fact, the New York Times reported it very nicely. They said that uh, we all will be looking forward to pro uh, President Trump's visit. And given he has been guaranteed a crowd of 10 million in a town which hosts a population of 8 million, that raises a lot of eyebrows. Yeah, I know. I mean, he, he really thinks it's going to be something. Any other thoughts on this? Any of you? So I think maybe the numbers are a bit skewed, but definitely the enthusiasm of the Ahmedabad yeah. people will actually uh, offset whatever the numbers people are like laughing at. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, I wanted to wrap up this program by asking uh, a lot of you young people um, about the enthusiasm on your campus or among your friends or in the city. Uh, how much of this is, is, is something that people are talking about? Anybody? So, uh, I guess one thing which is fuel, fueling the enthusiasm a lot is that given the president has already declared that they, there wouldn't be any major trade deals, then uh, why is the government pushing so hard and put, uh, putting such uh, kind of optics for the, uh, the whole visit is something which is being discussed a lot, about a lot. I think there is healthy skepticism because uh, there these, is skepticism. Yeah, because is, yeah. I think it looks a lot about optics and more or less about action. Because trade deals cannot, especially when you know the lot of third countries are involved, it cannot be negotiated between two countries. For example, the mobile phones issue involves China, and our deficit was China, and that cannot be done in a two-day meeting. So it it looks a lot about optics. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, enough about trade deals. I'm just, uh, I'm just. Going Is anybody to... going to the Motera Stadium? Are any of you uh, going? Do you want to watch it on TV? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe Sabarmati Asram.
maybe sabarmati yeah, yeah, that's, that's the first to. that's the first uh, uh, yeah. stop and anyways if you are uh, spending 100 crore rupees in just uh, for the just 3 uh, hour visit uh, people will be happy because uh, ultimately uh, they have built something which was planned for a long period of time and uh, it was built in this period but that amount of money 100 crores or whatever it may be a lot of people would be wanting to question that as well uh, that we've gone out of our way we've spent a whole lot of money uh, where is all of this actually coming from who is funding this is the government directly or indirectly funding this part uh, but be that as it may tomorrow is going to be an extremely busy day over here it's uh, all going to start at about 11:40 when uh, us uh, when the, when the usa uh, us air force 1 uh, lands over here in Ahmedabad and then the motorcade first to the Sabarmati Ashram then to the Motera Stadium and then the President of the United States uh, goes off with the First Lady to Agra from here and then they end up in Delhi. Tomorrow is going to be the business end of the visit uh, when all these talks are going to be taking place. So tomorrow lots of excitement. Join us as we cover moment by moment uh, the motorcade of the US President and the First Lady in Ahmedabad. That big event at the Motera Stadium and a lot more. Uh, till then, from all of us here, goodbye.